put down the remote and hold on tight. The next hour could save your life as we put you behind the wheel and challenge you to take the extreme driving quiz. This test plunges you into the action. It's do or die. The choice is yours. As you stop at a light, a carjacker jams a gun in your face. Your car is sinking like a rock. No air to breathe, no way out. You're doing the speed limit on the freeway when you see a car coming straight at you. Your SUV careens out of control into a barrel roll with you inside. You plow into a fog bank. Suddenly, cars are piling into one another right around you. This is the one test you can't afford to flunk. The fine's right here, sir. It's $137.50. Drivers say of all the dangers that lurk on the roadways, they are most afraid of aggressive drivers and road rage. In the wrong situation, these people can become human time bombs. When these drivers aren't taking out their aggression on their own cars or police officers, they might try to take it out on you. Would you know what to do? You can't predict which motorist is about to turn violent, but can you defuse the rage once it's begun? My God. Oh my God. Inventor Gary Rayner hates to be late, but the Friday afternoon traffic is barely moving and his frustrations rising. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, he's on a collision course with a homicidal road rager. I was about to get onto the freeway on ramp and um, just out of the blue, I mean, there was, I never would have guessed 30 seconds before that this was gonna happen. Your extreme driving quiz is now starting. You're about to come face to face with the murderous fury of a road rage attack. Now it's your turn. You've got the light, but you can't go anywhere. It's gridlock up ahead. When there is a space, the cars in the right-hand turn lane quickly take it. You're getting impatient. We've all been there. You decide it's time to stand your ground and you move to pull into the intersection. Suddenly, there's a loud beeping from your right. A truck with two angry men cuts you off. They almost hit you. They're shouting at you now, threatening to kill you. It looks like the road rager is leaning down to the glove compartment to get a weapon. But do you know which weapon is most commonly used in a road rage attack? Is it a baseball bat, a road rager's own vehicle, or a firearm? Suddenly, you realize your life is in danger. You don't know if they're going to shoot you, or stab you, or beat you with a bat. One thing is horribly certain, there is no escape. The road rager is about to attack you. What should you do? Pretend you have a weapon. Communicate that you're sorry and make eye contact, or totally ignore them. Gary decides to keep his hands on the wheel and not look at them. He rolls up his window. It's the wrong thing to do. The road rager leaps from his truck and charges toward you with a brick. Gary chose wrong. Let's go back now and find out how you would have caged the rage. We asked you, the road rager is about to attack you. What should you do? The correct answer was, communicate that you are sorry. Normally, I would tell you to ignore the aggressive driver. Looking at them just might make them more angry. However, if you still feel there is a possibility of him attacking you, you have the power of controlling the situation by neutralizing that aggressive driver. Normally, a simple apology, even if you don't know why he's yelling at you, will suffice. And he feels vindicated by his anger because you acknowledged that he was right. And that's usually enough to get out of the situation. Now, let's see how you did on the first question we asked you. Which weapon is most commonly used in a road rage attack? The answer is a firearm. 
Guns are a road rager's weapon of choice, but it's also quite common for a road rager to use their own vehicle. And don't be surprised if an angry driver carries a baseball bat or even a projectile like a brick. Gary Rayner believes that if he wasn't attacked, it would have been another driver. I think that if they were that easily irritated by something as small as me not letting them in at my green light when they had a red, that maybe they're doing it for fun. Maybe they're doing it for the challenge or for the rush, or maybe they're just doing it because they're out of control. Over here, man. If you're up here and anybody hits the back of my patrol car, it's a good chance you're gonna get caught somewhere in between that car and your car. And if you're not caught in between, you may still get struck by the, one of the vehicles. I don't want that This to police officer's advice may have just saved this woman's life. Just like that, see? Just like that. The side of the road is a dangerous place, and not just for civilians. If the side of the road is so dangerous, what would you do if you were stuck in the middle of the highway? Ronald and Melissa Miller are coming back from their first wedding anniversary on a slick roadway in Ohio when their car spins in the middle of the freeway. They barely miss being hit and pull onto the center median as a semi shears off the side of their compact. Ronald had just gotten out before the hit, and Melissa is still inside, but uninjured. Their car is a sitting duck for other inattentive drivers. Your car is stuck in the fast lane. What should you do? Stay in the car. Get out on the center median. Get out on the median and walk back toward traffic. The correct answer is, get out on the median and walk back toward oncoming traffic. If you're having car trouble, drive your vehicle towards one of the outside lanes, preferably the right side. If your car does come to a stop in the fast lane, you want to get out of your car immediately and move into the center median. Once in the center median, walk towards oncoming traffic. This will prevent you from being between your car and the center median guardrail should your vehicle get hit by another car. But the Millers aren't done yet. Their car gets obliterated just seconds after Ronald pulls his wife, Melissa, from the car. They jump over the center median, avoiding further injury. The Millers were hurt that night, but they were lucky not to be killed. It's one night they'll never forget. This real police video is being shot from behind a confused Alzheimer's patient on a Texas highway. Would you know what to do if you ran head-on into a wrong-way driver? Your first instinct is, oh my gosh, well, you know, what am I going to do? And you, sometimes you wait for them to make a decision, and then next thing you know, it's too late. Late one night on his way to work in Northern California, Scott Bagley met his own wrong-way driver. I was on Highway 50 going to work. I was about halfway there. Um, seemed like a normal, normal night. You know, not that much traffic because it's about 9 30 at night. And all of a sudden, I'm driving. I look up. And it's like, whoa, this car's coming at me the wrong way. You're about to experience the terror of facing a wrong way driver through Scott Bagley's eyes. Will you know how to survive? Traffic is light, and you're daydreaming as you drive to work. You blink. And there in front of you, coming head on, is a wrong way driver. No time to think. You have less than two seconds to the moment of impact. Think fast. A car is coming straight at you. What are you going to do? Slam on your brakes, veer into the center median, or pull off the road as quickly as possible. Time's up. Scott waits for the wrong way driver to make a move. Unaware the cars are closing at 130 miles per hour, he has no time to avoid the head-on collision. Sometimes, real life doesn't give you time to think. Scott wasn't ready. He broke his pelvis, his hip, his leg, and crushed both his feet. But what about you? Did you make the correct decision that would have kept you out of the hospital? Let's go back and see how you did on the question. A car is coming straight at you. What did you do? 
The correct answer was pull off the road as quickly as possible. By moving onto the right shoulder, you create the greatest amount of space between you and the wrong way driver. However, the bottom line here is to simply avoid a head-on collision. If you must swerve left into the center median, crashing into the center median guardrail is far better than crashing into the wrong way driver head-on. Scott's near-death experience has changed his life. I think I realize, um, you know, how, how precious life is and how it can be gone at any time now. Whereas before, I don't think if anyone really knows that until some of this extreme happens. Um, give her a call and tell her that she needs to come back. Coming uh, up, do you know how to talk and drive and still arrive alive? True or false? It's safer to use a hands-free device than to hold the phone. The answer when we return. Tell her just to make another copy if she can't find the disc. Sometimes it seems as if every driver out there is on the phone. But is there really a way to call and do it safely? At the break, we asked you, true or false? While driving, it's safer to use a hands-free device than to hold the phone. The answer is false. The problem does not come in holding the cell phone. It comes in the conversation and the lack of concentration. The difference between a conversation between a passenger and a driver is that a passenger can see oncoming or changing road conditions, where someone on the other end of a cell phone cannot. They'll continue to speak and continue to distract. It's one of the most terrifying things that can ever happen to a driver in a car. Would you have any idea what to do if you were sinking in a two-ton automobile? You're looking at real video of rescuers trying to save a mother and her baby from a submerged vehicle in Longview, Texas. Another minute and mother and daughter would have drowned. It all started half an hour earlier, when Rebecca Crochier and her 15-month-old baby Amy took a ride with their neighbor Glenda to the grocery store. They decided to brave heavy rains to make the trip, but it's a decision they'll ultimately regret. They are minutes away from being trapped in a sinking vehicle. Would you know what to do if it happened to you? The grocery store is on one side, and the um, fire department is on the other side. And there's a bridge going up like this here. And I told her several times, there's water in front of you. Visibility is limited, and roads are nearly impassable. Rebecca tells Glenda that water is flooding the underpass up ahead. But Glenda doesn't listen. She drives right into the underpass where the water is deceptively deep. Get the baby! Oh my God, get the baby! Seven feet deep and rising. Water is cascading in and your car is sinking fast. You try your power windows, but they've shorted out. You try to open the door, but the force of the water pressure is so great, it doesn't seem to budge. There is only a small air pocket left to breathe. Your car is filling with water. What should you do? Force open the door immediately. Open the door or break a window later after you're completely submerged. Or find the air pocket and wait to be rescued. Rebecca and her neighbor don't know what to do, and they panic. Rescuers plunge into the flooded underpass. They fight their way to the driver and pull her to safety. Inside the car, Rebecca is still trapped with her baby. The air pocket that is keeping them alive is about to disappear. She's afraid to budge. Suddenly, through the murky water, she sees the outline of a man reach out and pull her and Amy to safety. 
Rebecca and her baby are saved, but the choice they made almost got them killed. Let's go back now and see how you did. Here's the question again. Your car is filling with water. What should you do? The answer is open the door or break a window later after you're completely submerged. First of all, don't panic. Panic can get you to forget even the simplest of things. Now your natural reaction is gonna wanna get you out a window or door immediately, and this will practically be impossible. You need to wait till the water pressure on the inside of the vehicle equals the water pressure on the outside of the vehicle. Now most vehicles with their engine on the front will tilt forward, creating an air pocket in the back. Get to that air pocket. Wait until your pressure is equalized, then go out your doors. If you cannot escape out the doors, then you want to use both your feet to try to kick out a window. Or even better yet, you've been prepared with a center punch to knock out that window. You come around a dark corner, and there in front of you is a burning wreck. You're watching real video shot as the first cars arrive. An unconscious victim lays across the front seat. An officer and a bystander reach in and pull him to safety. Would you know what to do? Writer Paul Chapekian never thought it would happen to him. Well, I was actually on my way to a Burbank airport. Uh, I was going to be going out of town and I needed to pick up a ticket. Uh, but I was also hungry, so I decided to stop at this hot dog place. As he starts to turn, Paul hears a terrible screech. In his rearview mirror, he sees a vehicle careening end over end. No one else is around. The victim's life may be in Paul's hands. Would you know what to do if you came upon this accident? The driver is panicking. He's trapped in his seat and thinks his Jeep is seconds from becoming a fireball. You hesitate. The driver is screaming at you to help him. Settle down. It's gonna be all right. You're gonna be fine. Settle down. It's gonna be all right. You're fine. You're not sure if he's got a spinal cord injury and you'll hurt him worse by moving him, or if the vehicle will explode, killing you in the process. Get me out! Get me out of here! What should you do? Get the victim out of the car. Don't move the victim or check to see where the smoke is coming from and assess the situation. Help me! Help! Settle down. Help me! Help me! Help me! Paul decides to move the victim. The driver is in shock. However, he will live. But did Paul make the right choice? Let's go back now and find out whether you answered the question correctly. You come upon a victim in a burning car. What should you do? The answer is, get the victim out of the car. Get me out of here! In this situation, Paul made the right decision. Generally speaking, you should leave the victim while you find him. However, if there's a hazardous situation and there could be greater harm to the person by leaving them in the car, you should remove them. Yes, you could be sued, but the Good Samaritan laws should protect you. One more thing, it's rare that a smoking car will catch fire. It's even more rare that a car on fire will explode. Whether or not you want to save someone from a burning car is entirely up to you. There are no rules for heroes. Coming up, when and where do carjackings occur most? Is it getting in and out of your vehicle, stopped at a traffic light, or driving in a bad neighborhood? The answer, when we return. Of all crimes on the road, none is more likely to end in death than carjacking. Before the break, we asked you, do you know when and where carjackings occur most often? Is it getting in and out of your vehicle, stopped at a traffic light, or driving in a bad neighborhood? The correct answer is getting in and out of your vehicle. Carjacking occurs most often when your car is parked. Carjackers, like robbers, prefer the element of surprise. 
Experts recommend you give up your car. It's not worth your life. Club left, yes for Noah. But what if the carjacker wants the car and you? Jeanette Fennell and her husband Greg live in the exclusive San Francisco community of Pacific Heights. Greg works as a disaster planner for one of the nation's largest companies. It's Halloween weekend, and the couple is getting ready for a dinner party across town. We might have usually gotten a babysitter for an evening event, but the people insisted that we bring the baby. So we packed up our porta crib and all the equipment it takes um, and went to their home for dinner. And we had a lovely evening and um, you know, packed up everything and we left. As they pull into their garage, carjacking is the last thing on Jeanette's mind. Get ready, you are about to become Jeanette, the victim of one of the city's most notorious carjackings. You're feeling pleasantly drowsy as your car pulls to a stop. The garage door is closing behind you when two armed gunmen roll in under it. One jams the gun in your face and demands the car keys. You're worried about your infant son, but you're not prepared for what happens next. Get in the trunk! The carjackers order you to get in the trunk. What should you do? Physically resist, try to escape, or go along with their demands. Get the Fennels comply. The carjackers slam down the trunk lid on top of them. What about their son? They hear the carjackers. Damn! There's a baby! The carjackers are shocked to find a newborn in the back seat. My husband was the closest to the back seat of the car. He kept listening to see if he could hear the baby. Oh my God! You don't know if your baby is dead or alive, or how long you yourselves have to live. You can feel the car weaving crazily in and out of traffic and you can only think the worst. You have to do something, and do it fast. You're locked in the trunk. What should you do? Find the trunk release. Pull the wires to disconnect the brake lights and call attention to the vehicle. Or look for a weapon in the trunk, like a tire iron or screwdriver. Jeanette starts ripping at the inside of the trunk. If there is a trunk release, she can't find it. In desperation, she tears out the wires to the brake lights. The lights go out, but no one notices. Then you feel the car take a turn onto a dirt road. It stops. You're probably going to rape me. Don't do anything, don't do it, don't do anything. The carjackers open the trunk give lid. Give me your plastic, give me your jewelry. Take it. What's your pin number? What's your pin number? Three nine four two. It better be right. If we're gonna come back here, he's gonna shoot you. The Fennels are stranded in the trunk in a secluded forest. They're not sure how they're going to get out. But then Jeanette finds the trunk release, and they are free. Police find their baby safe and sound, all alone in front of their house. Let's go back now and find out whether you answered the questions correctly. Our first question was, the carjackers order you to get in the trunk. What should you do? The correct answer is, try to escape or go along with their demands, depending on the situation. It's a bad idea to take a drive with a carjacker. He is in control of the situation. He has the car, plus he's in control of you. By staying with the carjacker, you increase your risk of getting seriously injured or killed. In this scenario, the couple had no choice but to comply with the carjacker's demands. Their primary concern is for their child, so that did not afford them the opportunity to even consider an escape. Now let's go to the second question. You're locked in a trunk. What should you do? The answer is all three. Find the trunk release, pull the wires, and if you can, look for a weapon. Survival is the bottom line. Formulate a plan to facilitate your escape, call attention to the vehicle, or to formulate an attack plan. Take an assessment of what's in that trunk and what's available to you as a weapon or a tool to lend in your escape. 
I remember one of the officers saying to me right after we found out that the baby was okay was, you know, you're very lucky because it never ends like this. But what if gunmen use a devious ploy to carjack you while you're moving? It's called the bump and rob, and it was part of a crime wave in Miami that claimed the lives of 10 foreign tourists. But the bump and rob doesn't just happen in Miami. It could happen anywhere. Would you know what to do if it happened to you? You're driving on a secluded stretch of highway. As you look at a map, you feel a bump from behind. Nothing violent, just a little fender bender. Something about the driver makes you uneasy, though. The driver signals you to pull off the road. What should you do? Stop and exchange information. Signal the other driver to follow you to a busy place before getting out. Or wave down another motorist. The tourists in Miami pulled over where they were slain execution style by the predators who had staged the entire accident to ensnare them. Let's go back now and see how you did. We asked, the driver signals you to pull off the road. What should you do? The correct answer is, signal the other driver to follow you to a busy place before getting out. You need to check out the car that rear-ended you and the people inside it. If you feel threatened, write down the license plate number and ask them to follow you to the nearest safe place. But what if the threat to your life isn't a bad guy, but bad brakes? You hit your brakes and nothing happens. You're heading downhill, going faster and faster. What do you do then? Your brakes fail. What should you do? Bail out of the car, downshift to a lower gear, or apply the parking brake? The answer is downshift to a lower gear and apply the parking brake. But take a look at this driver. He chose to bail out of the car. Experts say bailing out is the last thing to do when you have a mechanical difficulty. You're far safer inside the car. If you're on the bridge. And Chase uh, 2 has the uh, suspect vehicle inside. Even though drivers feel road rage is the biggest threat out there, the drunk driver is the most deadly. Almost 40% of traffic fatalities are DUI related. By turning their cars into dangerous weapons, intoxicated drivers can ruin lives in a matter of seconds. You're driving down the street at night and you notice a car weaving across the road behind you. Would you know what to do if a drunk driver was following you? The car is all over the road and coming up quickly. It looks like you're going to be hit. You don't have much time to decide how to get out of the way. A drunk driver is following you. Should you make a right turn onto another road, speed up to put distance between you and the drunk driver, or let the drunk driver pass by slowing down? The answer is, make a right turn onto another road. You're going to want to get the vehicle past you without getting hit. The problem is that most drunk drivers fixate on your taillights, and it's a little like trying to get rid of a stray puppy. If you pull over the side of the road and stop, you may be rear-ended. Try to make a right-hand turn onto another road, and when it's safe, decelerate. Try to get a license plate, and then notify the police. Coming up, do you know what's most likely to cause you to roll over? Is it a high-speed blowout, a collision, or edging off the road? The answer, when we return. They are America's favorite vehicles, SUVs. But many can have problems with a high center of gravity. In some situations, this can make them roll out of control more easily than a standard automobile. According to one study, more than 10,000 Americans died in rollovers in one year alone.
At the break, we asked you, do you know what's most likely to cause you to roll over? Is it a blowout, a collision, or edging off the road? Most people answer blowout, but the answer is edging off the road. Blowouts rarely cause rollovers. 90% of all rollovers happen when your wheels slip off the edge of the road at high speed. That's because drivers instinctively swerve to get back on the road. They overcorrect, start going sideways, and roll over. Remember, if your tires go off the road, keep your car going straight ahead, slow down but don't slam on the brakes, and then steer back onto the road. You can prevent some rollovers, but others are unavoidable. Michael Pierce is a photographer driving home from an afternoon photo shoot. He's on the freeway in Los Angeles and doesn't know he's seconds away from coming face to face with the pavement. I was driving home up the, up the 101. It was dry and clear and easy driving. You're about to experience a rollover through the eyes of Michael Pierce. Will you know how to react? I looked at my mirror and when I looked back, I saw this guy had cut right in front of me. And I didn't have time to do anything. It was so quick. Your vehicle is going to flip. What should you do? Cross your arms tight against your chest. Lie across the front seat while still in your seatbelt. Or grip the steering wheel tightly to stabilize yourself. As the, the car hit it, it's as if it went in slow motion. There was a huge bang. And as it rolled over, I, th I thought, I I'm going to die. Michael decides to grip a handle on the passenger side of the vehicle. The handle is unique to off-road vehicles and is similar to a driver gripping the steering wheel. As Michael's car hits the ground, his other arm slams into the pavement. His car is totally destroyed. This guy came over to see uh, what had happened. And I guess the, the car was so destroyed that I think he was, he was amazed that I was alive at all. Michael chose to hang on to the handle, and although he hurt his elbow, he was lucky to walk away with minor injuries. Let's go back now and see how you did. We asked you, your vehicle is going to flip. What should you do? The correct answer is, cross your arms tight against your chest. There's not a lot you can do in a rollover collision beyond wearing your seatbelt correctly. The G-forces are simply too high and your body's at the mercy of those forces during the collision sequence. Gripping the steering wheel, you'll probably lose your grip and possibly break your thumbs in the process. Some race car drivers are taught to hold their arms tight against their chest when their car rolls over. This prevents what happened to Michael, that an arm may get outside the car and be crushed between the car and the pavement as the car rolls over. Michael's grateful just to be alive and looks at driving a little differently. I realized that uh, it's not worth going as fast as you can, you know? People drive too dangerously. But even more frightening than rolling over, what would you do if you stalled on the railroad tracks? Everyone thinks they know the answer, but the statistics say few do. In the United States, every two hours, either a vehicle or a pedestrian is struck by a train. Would you know what to do if your car stalled on the tracks? Your car dies in the worst possible place. The train is seconds from turning your vehicle into a pile of twisted metal. Your car won't start and the train is coming. What should you do? Signal to the engineer to stop the train. Run away from the train or run toward the train after you get out of your car and off the tracks. Surprisingly, the correct answer is run toward the train after you get out of your car and off the tracks. If you run away from the train, there's still the possibility that you might get hit by wreckage. Train wreckage has been known to travel over a quarter of a mile from point of impact. Your best bet is to travel towards the train at a 45 degree angle. Very well-defined rain shaft over here. Coming up, true or false, you can be electrocuted by lightning in your car. Oh! Oh! 
was able to hear the noise of the collisions going on and, and, and explosions and people screaming. And at that point, I knew there were going to be lots of people hurt. There is, there is a car accident on I-5 North. I don't know my location because it is very foggy. You are listening to a real 911 call from a motorist who's just come upon the immense pileup that Michael Adams is trapped in near Sacramento, California. It's been caused by dense fog. Oh, man. I know it involves about 50 cars. I can't yeah. believe this. This is the worst accident I've ever seen in my life. Um, 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 disability, just went, um, disability in the fog just went down to zero. Pile-up crashes are the most lethal of all traffic accidents. Watch him over. Oh, God, I hear stuff hitting. All right, oh, man, calm down. And nothing causes more pile-ups than bad weather. You're about to experience the sights and sounds of this horrific chain reaction crash. Would you know what to do to survive? You're driving to work. Without warning, the fog grows thicker and visibility drops rapidly. You pull into the slow lane and cut your speed. And as the fog grew even more thick, I couldn't see anything past the hood of my car. Suddenly, the road is blanketed in fog. You can't see a thing. Should you slow down but keep going, pull over to the shoulder and keep your lights on, or pull way off the road and turn off your lights? Mike decides to pull over to the shoulder and leave his lights on. He thinks the smart thing to do is to wait out the fog there. But as he sits there, he realizes he may be a sitting duck. What if the onrushing cars, blinded by the fog, don't stop in time? How do you protect yourself from a possible pileup? Get out of your vehicle. Stay in your vehicle with a seatbelt on. Or stay in your vehicle and lie across the front seat. Michael decides to get out of his car on the passenger side. But even before he's all the way out, he's blindsided by an SUV. You're thrown over 60 feet forward onto the pavement. Behind you, you hear the sounds of crunching metal and bone-chilling screams. You look skyward through the fog, but you can only see flames. I became aware of my surroundings after being thrown. I wasn't, entire, I wasn't exactly sure what had happened, uh, but I was laying next to a tanker truck that was on fire. And there was no question in my mind that if I didn't get away from that truck, that I was gonna, I was gonna burn there. You crawl into a ditch by the side of the road. You're in shock now and have hypothermia. And you are too far off the road for anyone to see you. You realize unless you do something, you will be left here to die. That's okay. That's right there. I know. As soon as we get you on the gurney, it'll be a lot better. Finally, you muster all your strength and crawl back to the road where paramedics find you. Oh, you're gonna be all right. It's okay. Michael was extremely lucky to be alive. His pelvis and both legs were broken. But would you have known how to survive this foggy pileup? Let's go back now and see if you answered the questions correctly. Our first question was, you're driving and suddenly the road is blanketed in fog. What should you do? The correct answer is, pull way off the road and turn off your lights. If the fog is so thick that Mike can't see, the other drivers can't see either. Mike should move his vehicle to the right and drive off the highway as far to the right as he possibly can. Once off the right shoulder, Mike should turn off his taillights to prevent other drivers from seeing his lights and driving off the highway into the rear of his car. Now let's see how you did on the second question. Once you're stopped, how do you protect yourself from being killed in a pileup? The answer is, stay in your vehicle with your seatbelt on. In this situation, Michael made the wrong choice, but he's very lucky. Your car is a steel cage. It offers a great deal of protection between you and other vehicles moving around on the highway. 
One other thing that you can do, slowly drive forward beyond the wreckage, putting the wreckage behind you. You don't want to be the last car in line in the fog. Fog isn't the only bad weather you may confront one day soon. What if you collided head-on with two million volts of lightning? Or you're stoned by golf ball-sized hail? Let's see if you're ready to weather the storm. True or false, you can be electrocuted by lightning in your car. The answer is true. Watch, you're about to see actual video of what it would look and feel like if it happened to you. Oh! Oh my God! The car was just struck by lightning! Oh my God! This young man from Colorado was lucky not to be electrocuted. The outer surface of his car took the hit, blowing out his tires as the lightning sliced through his car and into the ground. What happened was that it hit the radio antenna. It, uh, it used to be right here. Big antenna going up about that high. If you find yourself driving through a lightning storm, pull over and keep your hands on your lap. Don't touch metal like the steering wheel or the radio. That way, you'll survive this. Oh, oh my God! True or false, if you are in a hailstorm, you should drive to find cover. The answer is false. Driving will increase the velocity of the hailstones, so if you don't see immediate shelter, stay in your car and don't move. How far south do you want to go? Get south of this damn thing. I don't want to die. Of all the weather threats you'll ever face, it's the biggest. Tornado going across the road right in front of us. I think I'd be driving there. No, I wouldn't either. Yeah, hello. Oh, no, it has the power to suck up your car like a matchbox and drop you miles away. Meet Roger Hill, a man whose story will put you right in the path of a deadly twister. I, I ended up going through a very uh, intense rain and hail core, and all of a sudden, just as the rain and hail stopped, I looked off to my west, and here was this large tornado that uh, looked like it was uh, coming right at me. Just to see the winds that, and the debris that the tornado is pitching around through the air uh, is, is enough to, to send shivers up your spine. The RFD of this large, destructive tornado directly off to our north. Large, destructive tornado. Your car is about to be hit by a tornado. Should you try to outrun it, head for an underpass, or get out of your car and lay face down in a ditch? When I saw that the tornado was coming right at me, the first thing that came to my mind was to put the gas pedal down a little faster and get out of its way. Your car is about to be hit by a tornado. What should you do? Believe it or not, the answer is get out of your vehicle. Find a ditch or the lowest place possible and get face down. Even underpasses can become wind tunnels, and the smallest tornadoes can actually lift your vehicle off the ground. So get out of your vehicle, get low, and get your hands over your head. You're now about to face your final driving test, the lightning round. No matter what survival challenge you find yourself in, it will require fast reflexes and quick thinking. This final round tests your ability to react under real-world conditions. You will have three seconds to answer each question. Only three. Are you ready? Begin. Question number one. You pull into the passing lane when you realize your left wheels have drifted slightly off the road and onto the dirt. You are seconds away from a fatal rollover. What should you do? The correct answer is gradually slow and ease your way back onto the pavement. Question number two. You are about to confront a wrong way driver. In what lane will he come at you? The answer is the fast lane in all probability. Question number three. You see smoke coming from under the hood of your car. The fire is spreading. What should you do? The correct answer is both pull over and turn off the ignition. Don't open the hood, move away, and call the fire department. Question number four. Your car is gaining speed uncontrollably. Your gas pedal is stuck. What should you do? The correct answer is shift into neutral. 
Your extreme driving quiz is now over. Your grade is up to you. While each situation you've seen is unique, there is no substitute for being prepared. This is one subject where homework really helps. For even though survival may be an instinct, it's knowledge that makes the difference.